Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the council briefing session for today. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please read the roll? Council President Beggs? Here. Council Member Burke? Here. Council Member Cathcart? Present. Council Member Kinnear? Present. Council Member Mum? Here. Council Member Stratton? Here. Council Member Wilkerson? Present. Let the record reflect that all council members are present. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Ormsby, if you'd like to brief our May 3rd uh, legislative uh, city council meetings agendas, go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, council president and members of the council. Uh, and the administrative session for next week on the consent agenda. Uh, the first item is a recommendation to purchase a uh, backhoe, and David Payne from Fleet is here to brief this. Good afternoon, Council President, Council Members. This is a request for the Water Department to purchase a cat backhoe from Western States Cat in Spokane, Washington, using source well contract 032119-CAT. The total purchase price is $136,632.36. This will be a replacement for another vehicle of similar size and shape that has met its uh, end of life usefulness. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, David. Uh, next, we have two items uh, that Thea Prince will brief us on. One is a, uh, a value blanket and the other is uh, garage door and electric gate maintenance. So uh, Thea, you're on. Good afternoon, Council President and Council Members. Um, the first item that I have um, is asking for approval to enter into a value blanket order with Fastenal that will be used by multiple departments. Um, at this time, we have uh, four different value blankets for different city departments for an inventory management system, which includes vending machines and the products that go into those vending machines. Uh, so what I would like to do, these are all getting ready to expire, is I would like to access a source well, I think it's, no, it's national IPA contract and create one master value blanket that all of the departments will use. Any questions? Okay, the second item I have is a renewal for our um, overhead door um, maintenance contract with overhead door nation serve and this is the final renewal this was bid um bid back in two, 2018 i believe and we had the original two-year contract or three-year contract with two renewals and this is our second renewal this is a master contract that's used by multiple city departments as well any questions thank you Thank you, Thea. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a proposed interlocal agreement between the City of Spokane and the City of Newport for hearing examiner services. And I don't uh, see Brian McGinn on the call. I actually did talk with him about this today, so uh, I, I can brief it. As you all know, there are a number of, of public entities who either don't have a hearing examiner or uh, use our hearing examiner in the case of a conflict, and we also use the county's hearing examiner in the case of a conflict. Uh, the city of Newport has reached out and asked Brian if he had capacity to provide the service, and he does. And this is a contract not to exceed, so we won't necessarily get $3,000 in revenue uh, for Brian's services, but we potentially could get up to that in this uh, next year. And he and Brian says he does have the capacity to perform the work. Um, any questions? Okay. Uh, next, and uh, I I think Mike McNabb is probably on the call to brief this, but it's a proposed amendment to the MOU between the city and the county, and it relates to the behavioral unit grant funding. And uh, Mike, I think you're taking Justin's place on this. I am. Good afternoon, Council. So this was an amendment to the original 2019 WASPIC grant uh, that we were a subrecipient of through the Spokane County Sheriff's Office. The city accepted an additional $72,230 
and that was briefed to council from my from what I was told that was briefed to council previously. However, um, the county officials just now got the agreement ratified within their government process, and now we're bringing it back to you for its final approval. This funding is uh, partially used for the test buzz that we purchased recently this year. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Uh, next, we have a contract amendment relating to the uh, shared mobility bike share uh, with Lyme, and Colin Quinhurst is here to brief this item. Uh, yeah, um, good afternoon, council members. Uh, Colin Quinhurst in Planning Services. I'm here with a proposed amendment and extension of the wheelchair contract. Uh, this was previously reviewed at Urban Experience Committee on April 12th and briefed at a study session on March 25th. And so with the original contract term of two years expiring this spring, we are proposing to exercise one of the optional two-year extensions that are in the contract currently. Um, there's two optional two-year extensions in the contract. And so that would start this spring and extend for two more seasons. Um, but with that, we are proposing a few amendments to the contract. And these are primarily focused on enforcement, as, as we discussed before. Um, it would allow the city and Lyme to do additional enforcement activities. And then with that, um, we are also doing additional education activities. So um, more signs, stencils, and then in-app notifications by Lyme. Uh, there's one starting today, um, this afternoon, and it will go through the summer focused on sidewalk safety downtown. Um, and so that's launching this season. And so uh, that's, that's the overview of what we're proposing, and I'm, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Oh. Thanks, Colin. Well, Councilmember Kinnear has Next a question. We have a proposed. Councilmember oh. Kinnear has a question. I'm trying to pet the dog and talk at the same time. It's not working. Colin, thank you for that. And um, as you know, I've been that thorn in your side. Can we have some more safety around Lyme scooters? And so I'm glad to hear this. I think there are going to be a few people in my district will be very happy about that and certainly some of the downtown folks as well. So thank you for that. Um, are you going to be bringing forward those specifically to us then, or are we going to get another? We've talked about it, but are we going to get more specific, or is this what there is? Um, this is the chance today, and I can, I can be more specific uh, today if that would be helpful. I can. Um, or we can just talk offline would be great. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Council Member Stratton. Quick question, Colin. Um, you were good enough to put some stencils up in the Garland business district on the sidewalks. When we talk about more education and more enforcement, are we looking at more stencils? And if we are, could those be bigger or stand out more um, than what we have had? Uh, yeah, those are an option. Um, we're looking at ways to make that more systematic. Um, the first round was me out there with a stencil and spray paint. So I think we want to set up a contract and come up with more of a system. Um, but yeah, we can we can redesign those and, and make them um, fit what we need. And you did a great job on the stencils and we're grateful. But I, whenever I'm up there, I notice that they're just hard to see. So yeah. thank you. Absolutely, yeah. Thanks for the comment. Uh, Colin, my wife asked me yesterday what I was reading so intently, and I said only a city council member would be reading an article in the New Yorker about the latest state of uh, electric scooter mobility in uh, New York City. And I don't know if you've read that article, but uh, it sounds like there's some uh, machine learning and GPS work that can keep them off sidewalks, not with Lyme yet, but um, just wanted to make sure you read that, saw that. Yeah, yeah, and if, if they can do it in New York, they can do it anywhere. But um, Lime has demonstrated some some capabilities that that we're interested in pursuing. So okay. yeah, great. That's where it's headed. Great, uh, Councilmember Cathcart. Yeah, do do we still are are we currently prohibiting the use of Lime in Riverfront Park? Um, it was a complete 
ride zone up until recently. And what we did was we made the pavilion a complete no ride zone. You can't, the, the motor shuts down when you get near the pavilion and uh, you can't park in there. Um, it's still a low speed zone. So the currently the ice ribbon and the pavilion are no ride zones. The rest of the park is a low speed zone at five miles per hour. And then, you know, just today we were talking about making every part of the park of the Orange Bridge a no parking zone, um, just because we've seen, you know, scooters that get parked on bridges tend to end up in the river. So we'd like to avoid that. But, so I know just my own experience last year um, basically got stuck because I was able to ride through the park. But once I got to the pavilion, which is where I was trying to get to, there was no place to park the bike. And so basically I'm stuck paying an endless fee to enjoy the pavilion with no place to park the bike. And so hopefully some of those bugs are being worked out and we can make sure that folks can enjoy the bikes, enjoy the park and get where they're going and uh, have a place to put those bikes. Yeah, that's a, that's a really helpful comment. Yeah, we're trying to really tailor that pavilion um, no ride zone to be just around the borders of it. So yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. All right, your popular guy gone. Any other questions? <laughs> Okay, the, the uh, next uh, item on the proposed agenda is a contract amendment uh, for uh, additional costs associated with the uh, Regal Cleveland Grace Water and Sewer Replacement Project. Uh, and Kevin Pacanco is here to, to uh, present this item. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you. Um, this contract amendment is related to the ongoing North Spokane Corridor freeway construction work and our uh, utility relocation work uh, required as a result of the NSC. Uh, specifically, this amendment is for Wilson and Company for additional costs related to inspection services they are performing on behalf of BNSF. And this is specifically related to our Regal Cleveland Grace Water and Sewer Replacement Project. Uh, the contract amendment is for $10,600, bringing the total contract amount to $149,260. Any questions? Uh, not seeing any, I'll move to the next item. And this is also a proposed contract amendment with K&L Gates uh, for work that has been discussed at previous committee and council meetings relative to any energy production and sales. And it's an increase in the contract of uh, $55,000 and it's recommended for approval next week. Um, any questions? Okay, uh, next we have two uh, low bid awards and uh, Dan Bowler from Engineering Services is here to present those. I hope. Well, let me work on reaching out to him uh, and if it's okay with the council, uh, we uh, can move on to the next items. Uh, the next two are the typical placeholders for these meetings. Uh, one is the report of the mayor on pending claims and payments, and the other is a uh, placeholder for city council minute, uh, minutes to be approved. Next uh, is the legislative agenda, and there are uh, several special budget ordinances. Uh, the first is uh, involves both the general fund and the park cumulative reserve fund, and Paul and Josie from the budget office is here to present that. Thank you, Mike, and good afternoon, uh, Council President and Council Members. The first spe special budget ordinance is for $898,000 uh, to come from the General Fund Contingency Reserve account uh, to be transferred to the Parks Department uh, for windstorm uh, repair costs. Uh, they had damage to um, some of their parks, golf courses, buildings, historic features, and this would uh, allow them to get started on the replacement work for that and also removal of hazardous trees and other mitigation work to restore safety in the parks. Uh, happy to take any questions. Okay, not seeing any. Uh, next, we have uh, the Information Technology Fund, a transfer associated there, and Mike Sloan from IT is here to brief this. Good afternoon, thank you, Mr. Arnsby. Good afternoon, City Council. This is a request that was briefed um, is to transition what has been a temp seasonal slash project employee into a 0.5 FTE 
This was cleared in 2020, but due to COVID, it was delayed in, in our work with uh, Local 270 to set this up. So we're asking your approval to um, transition into a full-time position. The candidate that has been uh, interviewed and selected for the slot is the same candidate that's working in the temp seasonal role. This, uh, the budget is covered in the mail center based on uh, money that we align for the budget for operational for temp season. So we're asking for your approval for this, if you would, please. Okay. Any questions for Mike? Okay, next, and this item will come up, will, will reoccur through the meeting. Uh, the first deals with uh, the property acquisition fund and Michelle Hughes, our director of accounting is here to present this item. Good afternoon, council and council members. Um, this is ordinance 36044, and this is basically um, a special budget ordinance just to clean up and do some housekeeping um, due to the carrier bonds, or excuse me, not catching budget that was set aside in the budget to spend loan proceeds that were to be received with resolution um, 202-10035. What had happened is we had a resolution in the past that allowed three separate SIP loans of 2.5 million and we had budgeted all that seven and a half million and was carrying forward unspent budget uh, so that when the proceeds were received, they could go ahead and spend the proceeds on the loan and it got missed in the carryover. And so this is just a housekeeping item to add that back into the budget. Is there any questions? Thank you. You're on mute, Mike. Thank you. Uh, Dan Bowler is on the call now. So it, with the permission of the council, I would um, skip back to the consent agenda and go to item number nine, which is the award of two bids. And uh, Dan, you're on. My apologies in the extreme. Um, item 9A is the proposal will be contract for the Highway 902 transmission main relocation with NNAC of Coeur d'Alene for $567,765, to which we propose to set aside a 10% administrative reserve. This project relocates a portion of the 36 inch um, water transmission main out from under the recently constructed roundabout near Hayford and Highway 902 on the West Plains. Uh, the project also extends a 12-inch distribution main west of that roundabout. The low bid um, from NNAC was $30,000 approximately, or about 6% over the engineer's estimate. Three other bids were received. Uh, the 36-inch relocation, the bulk of the project is paid for by WashDOT and the 12-inch uh, extension is paid for uh, with city funds. Questions on that one? I'll move on to 9B. I don't see any. Um, and 9B is a proposed low big contract with cycle, uh, for a cycle eight uh, school safety project with William Winkler of Newman Lake for approximately uh, $1.477 million, to which we propose to set aside a 10% administrative reserve. This project installs infill sidewalk, curb ramps, rapid flashing beacons, 20 mile per hour flashing, um, wind flashing signs, and other similar elements in various locations throughout the city. Uh, the low bid from Winkler was approximately 79,000 or about 5% under the engineer's estimate. Three other bids were received. This project is funded by speed radar ticket money. Jacoby. Thanks, Dan. Uh, um, next, we will move to Mike. I just had a quick question. Yes. Um, okay. Dan, so is that work going to be done this summer? Yes, sir. Okay. They are nice and early this year. Okay. Excellent. Mm. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Sorry to jump the gun there a little bit. Uh, next, we'll go to um, resolutions and final reading ordinances. Uh, first is a resolution uh, as required by municipal code uh, to install security cameras within City Hall. And Mike Sloan, our IT director, is here to brief this item. Again, thank you, Mr. Armstrong, City Council. Um, um, this resolution 2021-0034 
in compliance with SMC's 180440 and 180460 requesting your approval installation of a security camera into the doorway that uh, which we had previously called the mailroom center. Um, we're reprovisioning that space, that mailroom, and all the equipment has been moved a couple years ago to the first floor. And we needed a contained area uh, for a lab and for the shipping receiving a very expensive network equipment. And because of the traffic that can go in and out of that room, we wanted to make sure we had security issues covered. And so that camera is there to um, track just like any other door security within City Hall. So we're asking your approval for the installation of that security camera. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Uh, next, uh, Michelle Hughes is back uh, to uh, brief uh, us on a, a limited tax general obligation bond to finance capital improvements at the Down River Golf Course. Uh, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you, Council President and Council Members. Um, this is the resolution just to finalize and get approval to actually draw the last $2.5 million draw against the original resolution of 7.5 so that they can complete and um, do the capital improvements to Downriver Golf Course. Are there any questions? Thank you. Thanks again, Michelle. And, and next we have uh, five uh, proposed or requested modifications to the retail service area, uh, which I think comes up about this time every year, and Eldon Brown uh, is here to brief these five resolutions. Uh, Eldon. Good afternoon, Council. We do have five resolutions to amend the retail water service boundary. There were 11 applications total. Seven of them are inside the urban growth boundary, four of them are outside. So we put one resolution for the seven that are inside the UGA boundary and a separate resolution for each one that's outside the growth boundary. I can either go through them now if you'd like or wait till next week's hearing, or I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. So I'm at your mercy, whatever you'd like. Council Member yeah. Mum. Yeah, thank you for all the detail that you put in there, Eldon. I would just like to request, some of these are quite hefty. And I would anticipate there'd be a lot of conversation about these. And I just feel like we probably need to, as a group, go through these and have a, a firm understanding of, of what it means to extend. So I'm just going to make a motion that we defer this to either a study session or the next PIES meeting, whichever one comes up first, and, and pull Eldon and Elizabeth Shadle in. This includes the SYSA property on the South Hill that has had a lot of public comment. This includes, again, more um, north side expansion in outside of the urban growth area in a rural area. And as you recall, those of you who've been through these hearings, they're long and lots of discussion. And I just think it would be um, give us another touch and have an opportunity for all of us to discuss this at length before we bring it forward and hear from the public so we have all our information together on it. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to defer to the next available study session or the next PIES meeting, whichever comes first. Um, any discussion? Councilmember Cathcart. Yeah, just, just for clarification, when you say defer to PIES, does that mean we would actually take a vote in PIES or just discuss this at PIES? Discuss. We, we can only take okay. a vote at legislative sessions. Yeah. Thank you. Council Member Stratton. Is there any way to get this? When's the next PIES meeting? Uh, well, we had one today, so it's a month. But, oh, but so if we a month, yeah. A month gonna, today. But if we can get a study session... Like a study session that might yeah. make, bring it a little, bring it up a little sooner while we're yeah. ready to talk about it. Okay, we'll see if we can get that. And you were doing this, I'm assuming, on both uh, 36 and 37, which is the. Uh, keep going. All the retail water service extensions. There's five oh. through 40. So my to clarify yeah. my motion, it's resolution 36 through 40. Okay. And I still that. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Burke. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Any opposed nay? Any abstentions? All right. Thank that, you. That's deferred to the next PIES meeting or a study session if it can be held sooner. Okay. Okay. That shortens your job, Mike. Okay. And, and <laughs> the, the final uh, proposed ordinance here, uh, again, Michelle Hughes is back. And this ordinance uh, relates to reserve accounts. Uh, Michelle. Good afternoon, Council Members and um, Council President. Um, this is an ordinance to go ahead and close officially the capital funds um, that were being underutilized. And we will eventually need an SBO to go ahead and spend these funds. This is just an ordinance to be able to close them and move the money over to the asset management fund um, for future programming. But again, we'll still have to come forward with an SBO in order to spend these dollars. Are there any questions? Thank you. Okay. Thanks again, Michelle. And then finally, we go to special considerations, and it's the request for uh, a value blanket uh, that have, was continued or carried uh, forward to this meeting from the April 19th meeting, and Major Mike McNabb is here to uh, further brief and or uh, respond to any questions that council members may have. Yeah, hi, Council. Um, so there's been some questions sent through email from Council President and Council members about this issue, and I don't have the information to your questions yet, and I'm working on it. So I'm asking to either defer this or remove it from the agenda for now until I get that information and bring it back at a later time. Council Member, Council member Kinnear. I'm assuming you said me, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, thank you, Major McNabb. I would move to defer this. Um, how long would you like it deferred, Major McNabb? Uh, at least a few weeks to, to look into this thoroughly. I want to check on um, some existing inventory to ensure that this is actually necessary or if we can make it through the rest of the year with what we have okay. on the value blanket. And also there was some uh, questions about destruction and some other things internally I want to look into. So would uh, four weeks be too much, three weeks? Do you want to defer it till the next public safety and we can talk about it then? Perfect. Well, next public safety is the third. So how of May, let's, do you want to defer it to the first Monday of June? Sure. Okay. I move to defer to um, the first Monday in June. Okay. That's June 7th. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, Council Member Mum. Yeah. If Michelle is still on, I, I was thinking, you know, this was uh, funds. Thank you for finding these funds, by the way, Michelle. Um, these funds were going to asset management and I just, it wasn't something that was we expected in our budget, and I had worked with um, I'm, folks in parks to see if we Council, could possibly yeah. use that Council member to Mom. get um, some playground equipment, and uh, I think Tanya Wallace is working on that. And I just wanted to see Michelle, who would kind of see you dropped out there, but um, was there any discussion about why this needed to go into asset management itself, or could it possibly be used somewhere else? Uh, Councilmember Mum, we're talking Council, about yeah. um, Councilmember Mum. We'll get to your question, but we did have a motion on the floor just for a moment to defer to oh, June seventh. I apologize. 7th. Sorry. Um, any further discussion on the motion to defer special item one? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor of deferring to June seventh, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, nay. Abstentions. Okay, that's deferred. Okay. Now, back to your question, Councilmember Mum. No worries. Um, sir, uh, so we're, we proposed to move it to the asset management fund originally because the funding, there used to be about $500,000 a year for funding that went into the asset management fund for miscellaneous repairs around City Hall, um, just small items. Um, that funding was cut last year, and so there was nothing in the budget this year. Again, asset management handles all the facilities and stuff. Just because we're closing the funds and moving it there doesn't mean it can't be spent on what you're wanting it to be spent on. 
I know Tanya is trying to work with parks to find um, what uh, find an other alternatives for this equipment. So I'm not saying that no, eventually it won't be spent on what you're asking. I just wanted to move forward with closing out those funds. It'll be just sitting in asset management's fund balance and we will still have to come forward with an SBO in order to spend those dollars. They'll just sit there. Okay, I just wanted to call it out because I've been having conversations and wanted everybody else to know what we were talking about. So I appreciate that, Michelle. And good job again finding that money. Thank you. All right, that brings us- I think uh, Council President, I think Council President and Council Members, uh, there are no other proposed items uh, on the agenda for next week, so that would complete the advanced briefing for the May 3rd Council meeting. All right, is there a motion to approve the advanced agenda as amended? So moved. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve the advanced agenda as amended. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Any abstentions? Advanced agenda is approved. And that brings us to tonight's agenda. I had one request from fleet management to defer item two on the consent agenda, uh, which are some leases for electric vehicles. They need to get a little more information from Enterprise. I'm looking for a motion to defer that for two weeks. So moved. moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Any abstentions? All right, item two is deferred for two weeks. Um, I don't know if there are any other requests for amending anything tonight. All right, then let us have Madam Clerk read the consent agenda. Reports, contracts, and claims. Number one, purchase from RCW Group Tacoma, Washington for two six-wheel flush trucks using Washington State contract number 01513, $562,011.48 including tax. Item number two is deferred to May 10, 2021 agenda. Number three, one-year value blanket renewal with transport equipment for the as-needed purchase of air brakes, $100,000. Number four, contract renewal number one of four with United States Electric Corporation Olympia, Washington for high voltage electrical, technical, and maintenance support services at the Waste Energy Facility from May 1, 2021 through April 30, 2022, not to exceed $90,000, including tax. Number five, Second Amendment to Lease Agreement with Ula Palakua Ranch Incorporated, Richland, Washington for the Spokane Envision demonstration site at 130 South Arthur Street from December 1, 2020 through May 31, 2021. $97,921 relates to special budget ordinance C36041, which will be considered this evening. Item number six, authorized subawards of emergency rental assistance funds to A, Carl Maxey Center, $385,000. B, Family Promise of Spokane, $2,199,980. C, Gioco Incorporated, doing business as live stories. $4,041,003. Number seven, subgrant of the Kaiser Permanente National Benefit Foundation funds to Family Promise of Spokane to support families overflow hoteling project. Required to meet COVID-19 safety protocols, $80,000. Number eight, agreement amendment with Ecovia Solutions, Salt Lake City, Utah for the Community Management Information System subscription as a service agreement due to increasing license and storage costs, $58,592. Total agreement amount. $261,245, number nine, continuum of care grantee agreement amendments for the redistribution of funds from two underspending projects as approved by the Spokane City County Continuum of Care Board as follows. A, Volunteers of America of Eastern Washington and Northern Idaho for one Hope House program, $56,590, two permanent supporting housing program, $218,641, three offsite permanent supportive housing, $301,326, four Samaritan, three, $105,497, number five, Hope House 2.0 Permanent Supportive Housing Program, $251,948, B, Catholic Charities of Spokane, 
For one, uh, St. Margaret Shelter Transitional Housing Program, $125,933. Number two, from Rapid Rehousing for Families Program, $319,543 is the reduction. Number three, from Homeless Families Coordinated Assessment, $169,770 reduction. Number 10, report of the mayor of pending A claims and payments of previously approved obligations, including those of Parks and Library through April 16, 2021. Total $6,066,948.97 with Parks and Library claims approved by the respective boards. Warrants excluding Parks and Library total $4,228,561.45. B payroll claims of previously approved obligations through April 17, 2021. $7,561,978.81. Number 11, City Council meeting minutes for April 12th and April 15, 2021. And just to clarify those continuum of care at item nine, uh, that's not new money being spent, that's just rebalancing um, the allocations between various providers. All those in favor of the consent agenda indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Any abstentions? All right, the consent agenda is approved um, I also, I asked Dave Steele to be here just briefly to talk about one of the special budget ordinances uh, as far as uh, rent at the Envision Center. Uh, I think we talked about it a little bit last week, but I just wanted to make it clear, Dave, if you could explain that we're not actually spending city money on this because we're going to be reimbursed. So we're fronting the money for it, but we're going to be reimbursed. If you could just clarify that for us. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, we're, we're signing the lease, uh, but they, the Envision Center actually has the dollars, but we need to create a landing spot for it. So this is a complete pass-through. Um, you know, there, there's no city dollars going into this lease. There's, there's some ancillary utility bills that we may pick up, but they're, they're very minimal. So. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions for Dave so he doesn't have to come back tonight? Okay. Thank you, David. All right. Yep. Now, we do have an executive session that we're going to go into to discuss labor negotiations. Uh, Mr. Ormsby, how much time um, do you expect? I, I think, Council President, and it should be no more than 15 minutes. Okay. Then let's go into executive session until 4.30 by my clock, which is currently 4.09, uh, just to be safe. And so council members, you can go ahead. I believe Jacoby sent you a link to join us. Those of you in the public, we don't anticipate any further action at the briefing session. We'll come back out at 4.30 and announce the end of the meeting or an extension if needed. All right, we'll see those of you on council in just a few minutes.
Good, after good afternoon, everybody. This is Brian Beggs, and we're done with executive session, and we are now adjourned on the briefing session. We'll see people back at 6 p.m. We're adjourned. <laughs>